from Crunch Econometrics. Thank you for joining me on our series on error drill and error correction model. Today we are going to look at how we can estimate the short run model and the error correction model. From the last tutorial that we did, on the screen is the outcome of the bounce test. In that video, I showed you how the bounce test was conducted on three of the variables being used as the dependent variable. And we can see the outcome again as a recap. When the log of NVE was a dependent variable, there was no co-integration in that equation. So all we have to do next is simply to estimate the ARDL model. Same thing goes for the real exchange rate. As a dependent variable, there is no co-integration. So only the short run model will be estimated. The only exception to the rule was when the log of imports was a dependent variable. We observed co-integration in that equation. So for that, we are going to estimate the error correction model. Remember I told you that the ARLDL is estimated using the ordinary least squares method. On the screen, I have spelled out the way the equations will be fed into eViews. So for the log of manufacturing output where there was no co-integration, this is the equation that we are going to put into eViews. This is a difference parameter, so that's why you have the Ds. So anywhere you have the change sign or the D, they are just to tell you that these are short-run equations. So this is a short-run model for the log of manufacturing output. But before we can be so sure that I'll be using one lag, as you can see here, I need to go back to eViews again to confirm the appropriate lag length for this model. So here in eViews, this is the, uh, these are the variables we have been using for this tutorial, the log of manufacturing outputs, the log of imports, and the real exchange rates. So before we begin to run all these analyses, we need to determine the appropriate lag length to use. To, to get that done, I go to Quick, I click on Estimate Var. In the endogenous variables section, I type in log of MVA. In the exogenous variables box, in addition to C that is there already, I type in LNIMP, which is log of imports and real exchange rates. I leave the last structure the way they are, 1, 2, and I click OK. So here on the screen is the output when LNVA, as you can see here, is a dependent variable. So we need to get out the appropriate lag structure for this model. So to get that, we go to View, we click on Lag Structure, and we maneuver to lag length criteria. The default number of lags there is 3. I can just change it to 4. You can change it to any number you want. I click OK. So on the screen, you can see that across the various information criterion, 1 is the appropriate lag length for the log of manufacturing outputs. Let's do the same thing for the log of imports as a dependent variable. So I'm modifying that to LNIMP factoring value added for the exogenous variables and real exchange rate. The lag structure 1, 2 as it is here remains the same. I click OK. Now you can see the output when the log of import is the dependent variable. To get the appropriate lag structure, I go to view, click on lag structure, click on lag length criteria. Lag length will include 4. I click OK. Again, for the log of imports, the appropriate lag is 1, as indicated by the information criterion. All of them choose one lag. Lastly, I do the same for the real exchange rate. So here is when real exchange rate is the dependent variable. This is the output. To obtain the lag structure, I go to view, click on lag structure, maneuver to lag length criteria, click OK. Contrarily, for the real exchange rate, the appropriate lag length is 2, not 1, as the case was for log of imports and the log of manufacturing value added. So now that we have that, let us now go ahead to estimate the short run model for both manufacturing value added and the real exchange rate. So to do that, we have to go to Quick. We click on Estimate Equation. And because, remember, these are OLS um, estimates, They'll be estimated using the ordinary least squares method. Like I said earlier on, this is the equation I'll be copying to eViews, already spelled out. So make sure that you have all your uh, parentheses in order. The difference parameter must be there to indicate short-run coefficients. 
the C must be there, the constants. So here you can see this is the first lag of NVA. This is the uh, first lag of, of imports. And this is the first lag of real exchange rates. The change parameters simply tells us this, are short -run, um, this is a short-run equation. So I click OK. This is the output. You can see here dependent variable. D is a change parameter. So this is a difference log of manufacturing value added. These are the short-run coefficients. So once there is no co-integration, this is all you have to do. This is all you have to do, nothing more. To be sure that our model is good, we have to test for serial correlation and perhaps stability of the model. So to do that, we go to view, residual diagnostics, we click on serial correlation. Because we use one lag, we modify that to one, we click OK. So the hypothesis is that there is no serial correlation. And given the F value of 0.816, which is way above 0.05, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So this model is not suffering from serial correlation. The next thing to do is to test for stability. So we go to view, click on stability diagnostics, and let us uh, select a recursive estimates, OLS only. Let's test for Kusan. So here it is, it lies within the 5% significance boundary, so we can say the model is stable. Now, for the real exchange rate, let's go to quick, click on estimate equation. Remember, for the real exchange rate equation, the lab length is 2. The appropriate lab length to use is 2. So, I'm copying that from here. So this is the equation for the real exchange rates. You can see here, D real exchange rate is a dependent variable. So you can see the lag one and the lag two of the difference real exchange rate. The lag one, the lag two of the difference manufacturing value added and the same thing for the log of imports. So we have to use the appropriate lag length for the real exchange rate. The lag length is not one, but two. So make sure that all your brackets are in order. Method is still ordinary least squares. We click OK. This is the result for the real exchange rate. You can see it here, the difference real exchange rate as a dependent variable. Because when we conducted the bounce test for cointegration, when the real exchange rate was a dependent variable, there was no cointegration. So all you have to do is to estimate only the short run model and you stop there. You cannot estimate an error correction model because there was no cointegration. But to test for serial correlation and stability, let's go to view. We click on residual diagnostics, select serial correlation LM test. Appropriate lag length is 2, which is OK. The result looks good. The F value is 21.30%, which is way above the 5% um, statistical significance. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis of no serial correlation. So this is very good. Now let's check for stability. We click on view, stability diagnostics. We select recursive estimates. We test for QSUM. The model is stable. It lies within the 2% boundary. You can also test for QSUM squared. Let's see how that will go. Recursive estimates only. Now we are selecting QSUM of squares test. Okay. There's a slight deviation from the 5% boundary. So this model may be suffering from a bit of structural breaks. So that would be a different tutorial. So you can see there's a deviation from the 5% boundary, then model is now stable afterwards. So this is a custom of squares test. The last one we have to do is for the log of imports, where we have co-integration. Here is a long run equation for the log of imports. You can see it on the screen. The appropriate lag is one, as indicated by the information criterion. So this is the model that we are going to estimate after which we extract the residual and plug it into the error correction model, as you can see here. So we have to run this one first, obtain the residual, and plug it in here. So this is the log run equation for the log of imports. Estimation method is OLS. Once we have done the estimation, we extract the residuals. Click OK. So this is the outcome of the regression on the log of imports. This is the result. The next thing we have to do is to obtain the residuals. We go to PROC, and you can see here, make residual series. 
The name of the residual series as generated by EVUS is RESID01. But I can modify this to any name I want. So I'm going to call this ECM. I click OK. So this is the series for the residuals. So this is what I'm going to use to estimate the error correction model. So to do that, I go to quick, I click on estimate equation. I have the equation already spelled out here. Let me just modify this ECT now to ECM. So this is the model we are going to estimate. You can see here the difference parameter for the log of imports is here. This is the first lag. Remember, only one lag is appropriate for this model. This is one lag of the log of imports. This is one lag for MVA, this is one lag for real exchange rates, and this is one lag for the error correction term. So these are all short-run coefficients. From here to here, these are the short-run coefficients. The ECM represents the long-run representation. Remember, we got the ECM from the residuals of the long-run model up here. So the error correction specification is a combination of short-run equation and the log-run representation. So I'm going to copy all this now to eViews and we estimate. Again, this is the equation. The method of estimation is OLS. We we'll click OK. This is our result. You can see the short-run equation, the short-run estimate, sorry, and this is the error correction coefficient, negative 1.10. So one of the basic features of the error correction term, in this case the adjustment coefficient, is that it should be negative. And this will tell us that there will be correction of the previous errors in the subsequent periods. It is also statistically significant at the 1% level. So let's go ahead to check for model stability. We click on view. Residual Diagnostics, Select Serial Correlation. We only use one lag for this. We click OK. This is also good. We cannot reject the null hypothesis of no serial correlation from what we can see here. Now let's go ahead to test for stability of the model. The custom test. It lies between the 5% boundary, so this model is stable. Let us test for the custom squared. The custom of squares test. Okay. This is also very good. Model is stable. Lies within the 5% boundary. So that is the conclusion of what we have to do concerning ARDL and ECM models. We have shown that once there is no cointegration, you estimate the ARDL model. And if there is cointegration, you estimate the error correction model. So in a nutshell, this is all we have done today. This is how you spell out your equation. If you are writing a project or if you are writing uh, a research paper, if there's no cointegration, this is how you spell out your model. And if there's cointegration, this is where you write it out. The lambda in this equation, which is the parameter for the error correction term, is the speed of adjustment, like I said, and it must come with a negative sign. The error correction term is a residual that we extracted from the regression of the long-run equation. So this is it here. It represents the long-run equation. I hope that this tutorial has been helpful. Now you understand ARDL and ECM models, and you can easily estimate uh, in any form of it. If there is cointegration, now you know what to do. If there is no cointegration, you know what to do. Thank you for stopping by. Hope to see you on our subsequent tutorials.